Good afternoon. Don't worry, I'll tell you what this instrument is. I'll tell you all about it. But I'm going to let you sit on the edge of your seats for a couple minutes and uh, let you hear some sounds that it can make. Forgive me, I'm going to torture you a little bit longer. <laughs> Matt mentioned the word experimental, and that's a, an important word for me, and I think it's an important word for a lot of uh, scientists and people who are interested in new ideas, people who are interested in exploring new ways of thinking, maybe discovering something. And uh, as a musician, I take the word fairly seriously, even though I think the word has taken on a kind of a, a very genre-specific meaning. Um, I was, uh, as part of my, my New Year's resolutions this year, for instance, I decided that I would embrace the social media where I had rejected it quite thoroughly in the past. And in setting up my Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, I'm still not quite sure what that is, and various other, <laughs> various other social media, I was asked to choose a genre for my music, and one of those genres was experimental. And I thought, what a strange idea. Because when I think about experiments, I think about a process that you initiate. Uh, a scientist initiates an experiment, and, and as a musician and an artist, I like to think that I'm initiating an experiment. In other words, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. And that's part of the fun for me, um, the excitement of discovering something new through a process that I'm participating in and in a process that I've, in fact, initiated. Um, nothing is more experimental for me than improvisation. And uh, as a solo artist, I do a lot of improvisation. Uh, and when I say improvisation, I mean I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time, folks. I'm not improvising to a chord series. I'm not improvising necessarily based on any preset factors, although sometimes I do choose to set limits to my improvisation. But I'm curious to see um, what happens. And with this instrument, which I will describe, I promise, uh, I find there are lots of uh, choices available to me, uh, lots of ways of approaching the instrument that will uh, generate uh, surprises. And the experience of surprise, I think, is what I seek when I look into contemporary art and music. Um, there have been a number of attempts made over the years to uh, put into context uh, art in, in, uh, in the context of human evolution, in the context of human society and human culture. And many of those attempts have to do with uh, the human, or what's perceived to be the human pursuit of beauty, symmetry, um, harmony, for instance. Um, and I think those are all very important ideas, but I have some notions that 
uh, art, uh, which encompasses music and all the various arts, might have another purpose as well, which is to challenge us and challenge us uh, in aesthetic and emotional ways that relate to the kind of intellectual challenges that you've already heard about quite a bit uh, today, and I'm sure you'll hear about more throughout the day. Um, the idea that by engaging in a, a sort of a non-intellectual level with a piece of art that might challenge us, that might uh, invite some new approaches to understanding and to aesthetics, um, we create a kind of a, a mind map or a model in, our, in parts of our being that allow us to experience uncertainty and experience new ideas in other aspects of our lives, whether it's uh, social interactions, uh, whether it's uh, scientific ideas, engineering ideas, um, whether it's political ideas that might be uh, uh, a little bit challenging, uh, that, we, that we as humans uh, have a, an obligation to try to understand in order to work together in this world. Um, which is why uh, I really have an interest in music that might be considered experimental, that might be considered difficult, that might be an acquired taste. Um, and I don't want to make the point that uh, new music and new art and the avant-garde is good for you, so you should embrace it, but only that new music and the avant-garde has very, very, very deep rewards to us aesthetically. And when we take a step away from using music and using art as a means to uh, validate, uh, validate our identity and to uh, fit into a group or to want to fit into a group and instead engage with it directly, um, our, the rewards can be enormous. And the reason I kept you in the dark about this instrument is because it relates to uh, how I think uh, people experience a new instrument, uh, even though this isn't a new instrument. This is an instrument with a, about an eight or nine hundred year history. It's best known in Europe. Uh, in France, it's called a Viola Roux. In Germany, it's called a Dreyleier. Uh, let's see, in Hungarian, it's called a Tekerül. Uh, it's got names all over Europe, depending on the language. In English, we call it a hurdy gurdy. And uh, it's a word I've avoided, uh, although it is fun to say. Donovan was rather fond of it. Um, but it also refers to the barrel organ, and it creates a little bit of confusion. This isn't a barrel organ, this is a string instrument. Um, in fact, it's a bowed string instrument, and I'll briefly try to explain it to you. Um, whereas a violin, cello, viola has a, a horsehair tied onto a stick, and the bow is a kind of a linear affair, here my bow has been bent into a circle, and it's in the form of a wheel. It lives inside the instrument, and uh, if we can maybe try and get a close-up on this, you can see as I turn the crank on the end here, the bow also known as the wheel, rotates. As you can hear, it can be very quiet, but it doesn't have to be quiet. I can choose which string sits against the wheel, uh, which creates the, the, the combination of sounds, a little bit like stops on an organ, if you can imagine that idea. Depending on which stop the organist chooses, determines where the air flows to which set of pipes, whether it's coupled in octaves or fifths and so forth. So here's a single melody string. And the melody, the pitch of the melody is changed by pressing up on wooden keys that pass through a key box, hard to reach over the lid. But as you can see, when I press the key up, it shortens the string. That's the melody. I have a few melody strings. I can play in fifths. And just to be a little bit uh, kinky today, I tune my top string down a bit so I can play in sevenths as well. In addition, I have strings that lie outside of the key box. These ones provide a low drone, and they're not touched by the keys. So it's like a bagpipe in that sense. Uh, bagpipe, violin, mm, pasta machine. <laughs> it's all, all rolled into one thing. And that is the Viela Roux there. Thank you so much for your time.